Good morning. I know this backdrop is a little different from what you're used to seeing on a typical Sunday morning at Sherwood Episcopal Church in Cockeysville. My name is Nancy Hennessy, the Reverend here, and I welcome you to my home, which is actually in Frederick County. Um, we decided to film from home as opposed to get out and get out on the roads um, as the evening as the day would go on. I know that the roads would get slick, and it's not worth doing. This is the benefit of virtual uh, worship for the moment. So, welcome to my home, which has this is uh, my living room, which has been um, redone into a mini uh, mini chapel, if you will. And what I have with me is, which I'm going to place on the altar, is this beautiful uh, stained glass cross that was made for me by a dear friend, Ray Pratt, years ago. It hung in, on the wall in my uh, seminary um, apartment in New York, and it hangs now in my home. But I'm going to place it here in memory of him, and also just to remind us that we are in a sacred space. Remember, Jesus used to gather in homes, so this is no different. And um, I welcome you today. As is our custom, we have a few announcements and things still go on despite the weather outside. Uh, following our worship today, we will have a presentation by the, actually it's now the transition, the campus tra uh, imperatives team. And they will share with you what they propose to the vestry from their findings. And also there will be a, even a further update of some of the things that they are already beginning to put into motion. This is a wonderful opportunity to gain an understanding of what we are and how we are seeing our future here at Sherwood or there at Sherwood um, and how we hope to be in the community, in the greater community. And so I encourage you after the service, uh, get another cup of tea or coffee or whatever and settle in and listen to our Zoom presentation by the committee. Um, I, I really commend you to that. Also. If you notice, we have posted our information in regards to our Lenten um, opportunities. We will have one for youth. We will have a Bible study for adults. And we will also encourage anyone who wants to read Waking Up White by Deborah Irving uh, to read that on their own or with a friend um, during the, the season of Lent. And then following Lent, we will have an in-depth Bible or book study of that book. But it's a powerful book, and I encourage you and I commend you to, to take it up and read. And then we will also be offering that Lenten Word Challenge, where we are sent a word this time. We just don't pick it randomly. We'll pick one randomly for you and send it to you. And that word is your prayer word, a word that you will take into prayer time um, and wonder where it, it might pop in or how the Holy Spirit is working uh, through you with that particular word and I guarantee you there will there is always something that you will learn from that um, And you can ask me about my experience last year and then last but certainly not least um, This Wednesday. I really hope as many of us who can will join us on zoom at 630 Wednesday evening it is the 3rd of February and we will uh, see Courtney Brown uh, via computer, uh, who will be heading to boot camp um, at uh, actually in about a week or two. Um, she is joining the U.S. Marine Corps, and she will be reporting for basic training at Paris Island in South Carolina soon. And we want to wish her Godspeed, to share with her some wisdom, or just so she knows that we will go with her as she takes on this huge responsibility that I know she will live up to, and I'm so proud of her. Courtney is a part of the Strong family. Uh, you may remember her. Uh, she was always my helper during on East, uh, Christmas Eve and Easter Day as she turned the pages of a book that I often would share with the children. So um, I will miss her, uh, but please, this Sunday, at si or this Wednesday at 6.30, um, and an invitation will go out for that, um, and it may even have gone out in the when in last night's e-newsletter. I can't quite remember. 
That's a lot of information on this snowy morning. And now let's take a few moments just to center ourselves, to open our hearts and our minds to hearing the Spirit. And then we will begin the service, which you can download from our webpage, SherwoodCockeysville.org, or it is in um, our newsletter as well. I'm so glad you're here with us. Let us have a few moments of silence, and then we will begin our service. Stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And now let us say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now for the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the general, in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord, they are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. 
The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They, stead, they stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. And now, as we stand for the Gospel reading, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. The unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. In the name of my Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Recently, a college friend of mine called to wish Kevin and me a happy anniversary. Ruth and I met the first week of college during that orientation week, and we became lifelong friends. We often talk to one another, and she has been a strong supporter of my journey towards ordination. And we often talk about our faith from her Jewish perspective, and from my Christian perspective. And this last conversation was no exception. We were talking about moments in our lives that have stayed with us. When someone has said or done something that has become a part of our memory bank, advice and guidance that has served as our guidepost. These words of wisdom came from all sorts of, pe of people I often call them thin, thin moments when the Holy Spirit penetrates our hearts and our souls in ways that mark us forever. These moments in life are easily, most moments in life are easily forgotten, but not these profound moments. These are times when the curtain of our ordinary life is torn back. And we experience something, or we hear something, or we see something that stays with us forever. Now during our conversation, Ruth shared one of those moments that she had. She recalled being a teenager and was in her Hebrew school, similar to perhaps our religious education or Sunday school. And she had this conversation with her rabbi and she began to push back on what he was saying. 
he was talking about the miracles from the Old Testament or from the Hebrew book. And she said, miracles? How can, this, how can these really happen? Where is the evidence? Show me how this is done. This doesn't seem like it's real. And her wise rabbi said, oh, but Ruth, there are miracles every day. After all, didn't the sun rise? Didn't the sun come and we have now day and it will set with the moon only to rise and the stars to shine this night? All of this, all of this was created by God. All of this beauty, it was not touched by human hands. That in and of itself is a miracle. These are things that we just take for granted and we never stop to see the miracle of it all. Oh, Ruth, miracles happen every day. And we see it and we take it for granted. She thought about that for a while. And that became a part of her that she would call upon in years to come when she thought about her faith or lack of it or questioned. She remembered the miracles of the ordinary. And so I wonder if that is what happened to those who were with Jesus that day in the synagogue. Did they witness something that stayed with them forever? That they would talk about to their children and to their grandchildren because it was perme it permeated their soul. Now the gospel writer of Mark wastes no time at introducing who exactly Jesus is. In the first verse, he states that God, that Jesus is the Son of God. And then moments later after that statement, we hear about John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness to repent because someone greater than he is coming. And then Jesus appears as an adult and is baptized in the River Jordan. He goes into the wilderness and spends 40 days with the demons. And then he comes out of the wilderness and goes to a seaside and stands among fishermen who are working with their nets. And he says, follow me. And they do. And now he is in Capernaum on the Sabbath in a synagogue teaching and it amazes others. All of this has happened within the first chapter of Mark. Mark wastes no time in declaring exactly who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. And so as I sat with this gospel passage, something struck me. One was the reaction of those who were listening to Jesus that day. They were astounded and they were amazed because he spoke with such authority. This happens before he was approached by the man who was possessed by the unclean spirit, and then it happens afterwards. And it reads, they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one with authority, not as the scribes. But I noticed that they were astounded, why they were astounded by his teaching, they were not astounded as to who he was. They knew his teachings were from a higher level of authority in comparison to scribes. And now, the scribes were learned men, well-versed in the Jewish law. They served as lawyers and interpreters of the scripture, and they worked alongside the Pharisees to ensure that everyone stayed within and followed the rules of God's laws. And in this early passage of Mark, it is made perfectly clear that Jesus taught with a higher power in comparison to the other teachers. 
But did they ever wonder who he was and how, how he was raised to that high authority? It appears that the people were focused on the power in which he taught, not on who Jesus was. And ironically, it is that unsuspecting character in the story that calls Jesus out as the Son of God. It's not the other wise people around him. Isn't that always the case in the stories of Jesus? It is the blind, it is the lame, it is the hemorrhaging, it is the demonic, it is even stargazers from another land who know immediately who Jesus is, the Son of God, long before any of the religious authorities or everyday people. Now, during the time of Jesus, unclean spirits were seen as unholy. It was something that was a physical or a mental disease, anything that would have separated an individual from the general population. It was the evil spirit, whatever that might have been, that elevated Jesus to his rightly position as God's son. And that, and with that, the people still failed to understand. Now, while we may not equate or even relate to this scene, with a demon possessing a soul of someone, we all understand the need to heal our brokenness and the brokenness of others. We all know what it means to suffer in mind and body and in spirit. We all carry baggage within our soul, wounds, demons of some sorts and misgivings that keep us separated from others and from God. I wonder who and what are the demons in your life? What are the demons in my life? These kinds of questions should make us all feel uncomfortable. We all have things within our hearts and soul that need Jesus' healing touch. We also carry demons as a society that we often place on the backs of others, other peoples, other individuals, inequality, racism, sexism, xenophobia, and the list goes on. Those not only impact our individual souls and relationships with our God, but it impacts our society as a whole. We are all lesser for it, especially those who are weighed down by the misdeeds society places on them. So what demons do we need to let go of? What forgiveness do we need to offer or receive? What addictions keep us prisoners within our own bodies? What deep-held beliefs do we hang on to even at the cost of dehumanizing our fellow human beings? What lies do we tell ourselves to raise our individual stature or the stature of our own tribe at the cost of another person or group? Can you, can we, can I muster the strength to dig deep and ask these questions of ourselves? Can we, as the body of Christ, commit ourselves to name the demons we perpetuate, sometimes with little thought or care? This kind of work is long and arduous. There are no easy solutions, but we cannot give up. We cannot forget, give up or pretend that our small effort will not make a difference, because it will. Imagine if those who walked their journey with Christ, those fishermen by the sea, stepped out when the tough, when the rough, when it got go, when the rough got going, when they became uncomfortable, or they felt threatened. Some did, but thankfully many stayed. Imagine if God's devotion to all creation was cast aside by those disciples. 
Would we be living with the knowledge that God's love for us and for humankind is real and present? Probably not. And I guess that there would be some human God, some human thing that would have replaced the void left by those who walked away when it got difficult and costly. Many say that a human God has already among us that we worship right now in our society. What Jesus was ushering in that day in the synagogue was a new understanding of how God desires to work and be and live in the world with us. God's Son was the living example of God's love for his creation, even one who was possessed by a demon. And that is why we must continue to face our demons and invite God's mercy to cast them out. This is not just about following rules. It is about transforming lives so that we are freed from the chains that hold us down and can be the light of Christ out in the world. Or better yet, so that we can be the ones offering wisdom, even when we may not fully be aware of what we are doing, to someone else in a moment when it is most needed. Because words matter. The truth matters. Especially from those of us who call ourselves Christians and followers of the word. So my challenge to you, we have two weeks before Ash Wednesday. Let us rest with this message that we must wrestle with the demons and come clean before God so that we can truly be free. Free to be Christ's light out in the world, impacting others with our loving words and actions that may pierce the soul of another. Just as my friend Ruth's teenage skeptical soul was pierced to make room for God's holy love to grow within her. Amen. Now let us stand as we are able to recite the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the, of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, "Lord, have mercy." For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God 
and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Cockeysville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, we pray especially for those impacted by COVID-19 and those on our parish prayer list, Sally, Debbie, Shannon, Jeff and Kim, Norma, Sharon, Margaret, Ed, Laura, Joyce, Christine, Mike and his family, Kendall, Jean, Marge, Sarah, Joe, Gail, Steve W, Michelle, Joe G, Jay, Stan, Rick, David C, Ella, Ella May, Steve and Debbie, Janetta, Christina, Khalil, Charles, Samantha and Courtney, Bud, Steve S, Debbie H, Danny, Allison, Harold, Dan L, Sandy and Jack, Julie and Letty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating anniversaries and birthdays, anniversaries of Kathleen, Kathleen and Marty, and the birthdays including Sandy and Ted and Dylan B., let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, we especially remember and give thanks for the life of Ernest Anderson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, Violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And in the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another to all our life, to Christ our Lord, to thee, O God, our Lord. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, are not, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you on all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
And now my sisters and brothers out in the virtual world, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And at this moment, typically I have my tech person give me the list of those who are out there in cyberspace. But since I'm going it alone, I don't have that. So I extend a hello to you. I saw some of the names, Ruthie, and I think it was Deborah and Charles and Kathleen um, and Anne, and I'm sure there were others, um, Maria, um, and many others who are joining us here on this snowy morning. And I welcome all of you. And now we are going to actually transition to the Lord, the Lord's table. And so let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice and praise to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, 
Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to the heavenly country where with all our saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And now let us say together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, <coughs> where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and the life to come. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now as we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation. Let us say together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all impacting lives through bold service and no exceptions. And now, my sisters and brothers, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.